Hi, my name is Mike Dopewood, and you're listening to Chris Gordon and Ramblings of a Hellblazer. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night, listeners, wherever you are in the world right now. This is Ramblings of a Hellblazer with yours truly, Chris Gordon. Well, thank you all very much for listening, first of all. I appreciate all your support, as always. Without you, this would be nothing, so thank you all. really does mean a lot. Today's guest, I am proud to present, has over 150 credits on IMDb, and that's just his acting. He's been in things like Warehouse 13, This Means War, even Mission Impossible, Ghost Protocol, through to Halo 4, Battlestar Galactica, Mistresses. He's also known as Stefan Javowski on Continuum, as well as Red in Strange Empire. And he'll be coming soon to our screens in the film Virtual Revolution and Project Eden. So tonight, without further ado, I am proud to present to you Mr. Mike Dopud. Good morning, Mike. How are you? Good morning, Chris. I'm doing great. Thank you. Excellent. As I said, I really appreciate you coming on the show. Uh, a fantastic opportunity for me again. Thank you. Oh, thank you. That's great. So, as I say, I've got some questions for you. We'll just give it a shout and uh, see where it takes us. All right. Ask away. Cool. So, what does, first of all, what decided... Oh, sorry, I can't even speak now. I'll have to uh, <laughs> edit that. But <laughs> what made you decide to have a career in acting? In the first place. Uh, do you know uh, what made me decide to have a career in acting? That's a great question because it's um, something that took me a long time to get to, but it's something that I always wanted to do. Uh, I've always been a huge fan of movies. And uh, it's funny, my mom used to remind me that I would reenact scenes of movies in the backyard by myself. <laughs> and I don't quite remember that, but that's what she said I did. And then you realize, oh my God, that's right, I did do that. Especially <laughs> after, like... Um, well, Mad Max, for instance, or Escape from New York, those types of things. So, cool. yeah, I've always wanted to be an actor, and finally one day decided to do it. Fantastic, fair enough. I think uh, we can all relate to that playing around in the garden, <laughs> reenacting the good yeah. films. It's nice that you've been able to follow that through and actually have your career and <laughs> make a living out of it. I know. Now my mom doesn't think I was such an idiot after all, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Because just... why is my son diving in these ditches? I don't get it. But... <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, yeah, mine just still looks at me and says, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> cool. So <laughs> have you got any actors who inspired you in your own career when you started out? Was there any inspirations you had? If so, has that changed over the years? Um, yeah, I, I can't say really there's been one specific actor per se that is, uh, but I love different performances of, uh, I think initially, initially it was Mad Max, uh, Mel Gibson in Mad Max, and watching that movie, that post-apocalyptic world was something that really stuck with me um, yeah. for years, years and years. So, at the end of the day, I think that's my biggest influence. I, I'd have to say it was probably Mel Gibson, and um, I've always thought he was a great actor. I know politically, he's done some things in the recent years um, <laughs> that maybe we shouldn't talk about, but. I'm just talking about as far as actors go. And Anthony Hopkins is another one um, I just find amazing to watch. Uh, I totally agree. DiCaprio as well. Uh, Daniel Craig. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, Liam Neeson. I love what Liam Neeson's doing now. It's just amazing to me. He is. He's brilliant, isn't he? He's, uh, he's just taken a whole new turn. and he's, Yeah, for some reason, he's just... They've, the roles he's playing now, he's, you know, especially with like Taken and things like that, you're just like... You know, know what, man? You, you just—I I would never want to cross you. <laughs> exactly, and he's doing it, you know, in his fifties, I believe, his late fifties, and yeah. that's amazing to me, and I love it. And he looks great doing it, so leaves hope for some of us, you know. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I mean, you mentioned Anthony Hopkins as well, who I think's got to be, you know, um, present company, except to one of my favorite all-time actors. He is just, yeah. The, he's one of those. He just comes on screen in the presence that you just have. I don't think there's a bad movie with him in it. I think you're right. You know, I don't think there is a bad one. And he's just so good and so committed in everything he does. Um, he's just a, a joy to watch. And, uh, you know, again, Science of the Lambs. I, I keep going back to these older films. Um, but for me to watch, he was one of the first guys to be able to make an evil person uh, likable. Definitely. Right? And yeah. you actually were fighting for him. And this guy was a killer. And you're like, come on, go, you can do it. Right? <laughs> <laughs> You're hoping he gets away, and that to me is is, is a sign of a, a, a great character choice, a great a great actor. 
Oh, Geth, I totally agree. Because um, you couldn't have got anyone more vile than Hannibal Lecter as a character. But you, oh. you, you, you battle with yourself in the film, don't you? Because you're sat there and you're like, I, sh- I really shouldn't be doing this. Well, why do I want him to get through? I know. He eats people. Yeah. <laughs> and, and you're like, but I like him somehow. Right? <laughs> it makes sense, but yeah. that's how good. <laughs> but then I guess the way he ate people, it was just, uh, he had his own, um, they had some, they did something bad in their own past. So he was very selective, I think. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Good point. That's a good point. See, there we go. We justified it. <laughs> we have. Yeah. <laughs> With the old Chianti. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So what would you say has been the most defining moment for you as an actor? Wow. wow. Um, the most defining moment? Well, here's a great one. I was doing a series called uh, Mistresses uh, on ABC. And growing up in Montreal, I had no, you know, you have these dreams of maybe being in Hollywood one day. But they're really so far-fetched at that point in your life that for me watching, you know, one of my dreams was to be on Sunset Boulevard with a beautiful woman mm-hmm. driving a cool car in Hollywood, right? Yep. <laughs> and there I was on Mistresses, and it was a point, and I told the producers this. I said, this is, I've arrived. Like, this is exactly what my vision was, this dream. <laughs> and there I was with, Jess McCallum was my co-star, a good friend of mine, and there I was with her on my arm, and I had a DeLorean. I drove a DeLorean on the oh, show. Wow. Sunset Boulevard coming out of a posh restaurant, and there, and I'm looking around, and I said, I can't believe it. Somebody's driving up my DeLorean. I've got this beautiful woman on my arm, and I'm on Sunset Boulevard. I have arrived, you know? <laughs> yeah, I, I've got no words for that. That's just... That's just right? Yeah, just, that's it just... couldn't have been more perfect. Uh, I mean, obviously, the fact that I was shooting a movie or a TV show on a major network, it just... It, it all just... It just dawned on me. I'm like, oh, my God, here I am. I'm actually doing this. Yeah. And a DeLorean as well. It couldn't have been any other yeah. car. It had to be a <laughs> Of course. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. I mean, you've had some really great opportunities. I mean, you know, if you look at your IMDb, for anyone who's out there, it's over 150 credits as an actor alone, 40 as a stuntman. I mean, do you have a favorite show? It's probably going to be really hard to pick, or a favorite thing that you've been on or been involved in. Uh, well, the favorite one's always the next one, right? Because that yeah. means you're <laughs> great. Uh, um, but going back, there's been so many... Um, Great shows. I loved being on the Stargate franchise. Uh, I, I thoroughly enjoyed um, doing that as well. I mean, uh, Virtual Revolution is a movie that I just finished uh, that we did last year that that is doing the festival circuit now. That was a big thrill for me. Also, being the number one lead on a movie um, was, was a first for me as far as that genre, especially uh, a sci-fi genre and a big movie shooting in Paris. Yeah. That was a thrill. Well, um, and I, I've done a couple mini series in Canada that were great. Canada Russia '72, which was about the 1972 NHL All Stars playing against the Russian Nationals, mm-hmm. and it was sort of a Cold War type feel to that movie. And the mini series was great because we were all just having a blast playing hockey and, and acting. And you, could, you know, for me, <laughs> growing up, hockey player, there was nothing better. Fantastic. That was, sounds really good. I mean, you said before as well, your inspirations growing up were like Mad Max and that sort of thing. And looking at it as well, you've you've done a lot of like superhero and sci-fi things throughout your career as well, Smallville, uh, Continuum and stuff. And it, it just seems yes. to me that you're focusing and you really are living what you really wanted to be. You know, <laughs> you're doing the kind of films and shows that you really loved um, to sort of act out as a kid. Yeah, and it's funny because, uh, you know, I can be honest, maybe some people, other actors can do this, but for me, there was no way I could figure out where my path was going to go. You're just hoping to work, and you're trying to do the best you can mm-hmm. to be employed. So for me, it was amazing that all of a sudden, it sort of hit in the sci-fi world, and yeah. it, it sort of stuck that way, and, and that's what I, I don't know if it was a focus, but it seemed like I was getting more viewers from the sci-fi world that seemed to like what I was doing, so mm-hmm. it, it's kind of an path that, I, and I tend to be in this sci-fi universe, and I love it. I'm, I'm really enjoying it. Excellent, fantastic. I know you mentioned Virtual Revolution there as well. We'll go on to that. I've got a few questions from a couple of people, so we'll ask them first, and then we'll go on to Virtual Revolution, because I want to find out all okay. about that one. <laughs> Sounds great. Cool. So first of all, Laura Howard, uh, Laura Marie Howard, she's a actress friend of mine. Uh, she's starting out at the moment. She's just been in Pandorica, which is a Brit sci-fi independent film. It's actually a okay. brilliant film. I went to the world premiere of it with them. She'd like to know, what kind of advice would you give to a new actor or actress starting out? The best advice I can give is, is literally just be patient. 
be patient and work, prepare, do the homework, study. Even if you, you know, a lot of people say, well, I don't have money to study. You find ways, read plays, do theater, do whatever you can. I think that's the most important thing because I think that's what's happened along the way with television. A lot of people have stopped working on the craft. And I think it's important to go back and, and to do theater and to study and literally not, and have patience because you could hit it your first gig could be the one that propels you or it'll be like sort of me where I just keep, I keep working. I'm very fortunate to keep working, but my path seems to be, you know, little step by little step by little step. So everybody has a different journey and uh, just literally stay the course. And if it's something that you love to do, make sure acting is what you love to do. Make sure it's your passion because if it isn't, it's going to be a very sad life. Yeah, I can imagine so, because I mean, what you see as well is the fact that when you guys are on the screen, what people do, I think I mentioned, I had Catherine Dyer on last week, and she runs Drama Inc., and the husband, right. the drama school, so when she's not acting, she's teaching it, and you're, I think, 90% of actors at any one time are probably unemployed, looking for more work, and that's what people don't see, isn't it? It's like the, the and if you don't have that passion behind you, I can just imagine how hard that will be for you. <laughs> Well, the biggest thing about acting, I think, is, is there's a lot of rejection. No matter who you are, you get rejected. Even if you're doing fantastic. Say you're on this great pace. You're, you're booking five auditions, mm-hmm. right? You're booking, say, five out of ten. That's amazing. It's probably unheard of, especially starting out. Um, so you get rejected more than 80 90% of the time, and that's yeah. okay. That's just the nature of the beast. So. For me, it's just stay the course. And, and, you know, they always say don't make it personal. Yeah, well, sometimes it is personal. It hurts sometimes when you lose a part. I have to, it's happened to me. Mm-hmm. I can't just sit there and say, no, I'm never, once the audition is done, it's done. You try to tell yourself that, but <laughs> sometimes it, that's okay. Let it hurt, but then get over it, right? Yeah. Don't sit there and follow in the pain. Get over it. Sit there and go, okay, yeah, that stung. I'm done. Okay, focus on to the next one, onward and upward. Yeah, I mean, it can, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm the same from interviews, not for uh, for interviewing for jobs, rather than obviously acting. But it's to say, you know, I, you've got to get out of that. You can't get out of that feeling after, and you know, that's it. Put it beside you. You, you know, if you don't get it, you are going to hurt. And so, I kind of feel that with interviews for jobs, which isn't the same as acting, but it, it's a sort of a parallel, <laughs> parallel uh, yeah, thing. Yeah, absolutely. There. Job interviews are the same thing. I, I I did the corporate world for a while, and I remember some of the interviews I went into and. <laughs> They didn't go as well as I thought, you know, and just like auditions, sometimes you, you plan everything, you think it'd be great, and you walk in and you're like, oh my God, what happened to me, right? But that's part of the that's part of it. And sometimes on set, you, you have takes that aren't perfect. And, and I can tell you how many actors would sit there and would love to redo every scene they've ever done just mm-hmm. to see if they get it better, right? Yeah. So that's the way you got to look. Uh, it's tough at first, but then I think you get into a rhythm and then you realize, okay, just hang in there. It's all going to be okay. Excellent. Great advice there, Mike, for that one. Thank you. I'll uh, take that myself as well. I've got a role in Robin Hood next year. Uh, it's, we're doing a new TV series, web TV. Uh, and I brought the guys onto my show, Robin Hood New Beginnings. It's a female Robin. It's a twist on the tail. It's, it looks really, really good. Um, oh, congratulations. Thank you. So I, I got to be the jailer. So I get a talking, I get a little talking role. I got for it as well. And uh, I've been told it's recurring, but it depends after my first go whether uh, <laughs> they kill me off or not. <laughs> Don't worry, it's happened to me a bunch of times. <laughs> like, it's possibly recurring, possible recurring role. You're like, okay, yeah, I guess that we have to wait and see how I do, right? Exactly, yeah. See how my see how my few lines go in the first one, and then we'll see whether it makes it. <laughs> the jailer gets overrun. Yeah. <laughs> cool. You'll be fine. You'll be great. <laughs> well, I'm taking all the advice on board from you guys, so hopefully it will be. <laughs> there you go. Okay, so Angel Kitty's kind of. What's the funniest and scariest movie that you've ever seen? Or funniest or scariest movie? Well, the scariest one, and people may laugh at this, but the first time I had no idea what to expect with the Blair Witch Project. And okay. uh, I sat in the front row. I remember my wife and I were sitting in the front row and totally not not knowing what to expect from this movie. Mm-hmm. And at the, it was the opening night, and the movie, the original movie we wanted to see, I can't even remember what it was, but we wanted to see something else. It was sold out, so then we went to the Blair Witch Project because we were already out. And sitting in the front row, and I think my wife, too, being so scared and grabbing my legs or grabbing my arm, <laughs> um, something would happen. She grabbed me, and I'd jump. And, and I have to say, that was probably one of the scariest movies I saw. I rewatched it again, and it wasn't as scary, but that first time I, I watched it, it totally had me. <laughs> <laughs> 
Like, I can't believe I'm actually scared. I'm like, the suspense is killing me. <laughs> it's probably that coupled with the fact that, you know, your, your wife was so scared that she couldn't help but jump every time she grabbed hold of you. Yes. Exactly. Funniest movie. Oh, there's a bunch. I mean, I love Trading Places, uh, Ace Ventura. Well, oh, I can't think of any other ones offhand. But yeah, I like a lot of the old movies I thought were funny, so... Awesome, awesome. I think your that scary movie moment as well. I had one. It was, you, remember Seven, the film Seven. Yes. Morgan Freeman. Yes. Oh, that was good. Yeah, I was sat in the front row with a friend of mine at the time, female friend at uni, and it was like you just reminded me. It's like <laughs> that moment where I think it's Sloth, and he suddenly gets yeah. up and goes. <gasps> she literally jumped three feet in the air, and the entire <laughs> cinema fell about laughing. It's <laughs> it like nearly punched me in the face as we did. <laughs> Oh, yeah, that was just one of those moments God. of like, oh! <laughs> and you got beat up. You got scared and beat up. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Perfect night out in Wales. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I like that one. <laughs> uh, Carissa is asking, if you could play any character in a TV or in a TV show or movie, who would you play and why? That's a good one. Um, I'm trying to think of... I really like what... Uh, the Mad Max remake, I really liked what Tom Hardy did with that one. I thought he did a great job in that movie. I'm trying to, but I think at the end of the day, I think doing – there's two things I want to do. I want to do a romantic comedy. Mm-hmm. That's what I'd love to do and try and, and see how I – if I can pull that off somehow. <laughs> um, that's one of the things that I'd love to do just to, you know, to stretch out uh, the muscles, so to speak. I really enjoy – it's something I would really like to do as far as – I'd love to do a great, uh, another great action thriller movie as well. I tend to get into these deeper, darker movies, and it seems to be something I resonate that resonates with me. So I think that's another. I'd like to stay in that genre if I can as well. All right, cool. Sounds good. Great genres to be in as well. I think so. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah, comedies are interesting. They just look like if you're watching, they just look like fun. They look like. You get on set and you just have a blast with it, and yeah, and um, and that's I think the main reason why I'd like to do that. <laughs> it looks it, just looks like fun, right? It does, yeah, it does. It's yeah, you, you're right. You can just picture that back, you know, off stage and off screen. Sorry, off screen, everyone's just having a good laugh, yeah. and a good chuckle. Uh, what's the best thing about your job? The best thing about my job is all the people I get to meet. Mm-hmm. I. I I find it so challenging as far as the work itself goes, but I love the fact that you meet people from all walks of life. I I just really enjoy the crews are always great, and the other actors tend to always be great. Not all the time, but most of the actors tend to be great. (laughs) You meet people from all walks of life, and and that's the one thing I really enjoy about it is you get to meet and talk and and share stories that are amazing Mm because there's not many places in the world where you can put, say, two, three hundred people together at one, uh, one moment. And you're all trying to accomplish a common goal, and yet you're all doing it in different ways. Some of the camera guys, some of the grips, some of the other people are, are lifting, the, you know, uh, building sets and the art department from everything. And then you have the producers and the writers. I just love that whole team concept of, of making movies. Yeah, that's great. I mean, it does seem yeah, they're very much sort of a family atmosphere. Whichever set you're on, there, you're right. Everybody gets involved. Every there's no one else better than anyone else. Well, the, I say maybe some personalities may be like that, <laughs> but you know, well, you, you, well, you're always going to get it, no matter. What. I mean, I get them in my job in IT, and you know, throughout the careers, but it happens. But yeah, there always seems most people I speak to um, from you guys, there does seem to be that that is a common theme. It's the people you meet, the people you work with, from your colleague, you know, your co-star and actors, right through to the set right. designers and everything. Yeah, it seems. I, and, and, you know, there's times, too, where I'm amazed that movies actually get made or TV shows actually get made because <laughs> there's so many things that could go wrong, and it always happens. And and I realize, you know what it is, is everybody, you know something inevitably is going to go wrong. Mm-hmm. So what do, what do you do? You, all, you don't cry about it. You just sit there, okay, well, we lost that location. So how do we fix this? How do we make the scene better? How do we change that? Okay, we can't use the outside. we got to, you know, go inside and shoot it. So uh, I love the creative process and the problem solving Um as far as, you know, a lot of the great directors out there, I think, are great at problem solving and yep. just figure out a way to get it done and, and still stays true to the to the story. So that's, yeah, I, I just love what I do. I, <laughs> I still do, and I can't see myself doing anything else. <laughs> Sounds perfect. It really does. Okay. Well, um, what's kind of the funniest thing that's happened to you on set? 
you you can you know I'm sure there has what you've just said could really lead into a question like that. <laughs> <laughs> that, you can, that you're allowed to talk about. <laughs> um. Oh, this, give me a minute here. Uh, I mean, I've been. I remember there's times where where uh, a certain show I did Canada Russia seventy two. Uh, what was just, we would just laugh all day long because there was times where the director just kept the cameras rolling and we were in the locker rooms and then we would just go on these tangents as far as the dialogue goes. And it was totally unscripted and guys would just go off and, and start talking about whatever. And I remember those days because your cheeks would hurt from laughing so much all day long. It wasn't one specific thing, but it was, I remember all day long, you have all these moments of, of making you know a bunch of guys making fun of each other the whole day, <laughs> all guys, right? Yeah. And you know, as the days progressed, it got worse and worse and worse. But nobody ever was, um, nobody really crossed the line. Does that make sense? Nobody really crossed the line to hurt somebody else. It was always yeah. in, in good fun, but they just kept getting. It was just funny. It was like a fun, <laughs> especially at the beginning. I just remember <laughs> we couldn't stop. You know, we just making fun of each other, but we had such a blast doing it. Um, <laughs> What else has happened? I remember uh, I, I, through hockey, I used to play hockey and stuff, mm-hmm. and I've got uh, I've broken my teeth a few times. And uh, I remember doing a show and doing a scene, and my teeth popped out. That was one of the <laughs> right, and not re- for a moment there. You're talking, doing the scene, and you're like, "Oh my god, my tooth is out." <laughs> so, a little bit. I don't know if that's so funny as much as embarrassing, but. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, that, that happened too. Cool. Funny for everyone else what, who's around you. <laughs> yeah. At that point, you're panicking, right? You're like, yeah. oh my God. Oh shit, what do I do now? What do I do? <laughs> Excellent. Cool. I mean, so moving on to sort of the final questions of what are you currently working on at the moment? You've mentioned Virtual Revolution before, which is one of your latest films where you're the, you're the yeah. lead. What's all that about? What's that film about? What can. Uh, Virtual Revolution is a movie we, we shot in Paris last year. Um, mm-hmm with our director, Guy Roger Duvert. And um, it's basically a, a sci-fi film set in the near future. And mm-hmm. it's all about the virtual reality and the virtual revolution did happen. And it's how um, maybe it's not what we expected it to be. And this is a darker version of what some people might expect virtual reality to be. And um, with virtual revolution, basically it's, it's, a story about, uh, I like to think of it a story about morality. Uh, mm-hmm. It follows this kid called Nash, who is uh, a shadow agent, so to speak. So right. he he basically tries to fight these terrorists in the real world and in the virtual world. And mm-hmm. um, what's happened is the world has uh, basically divided into two types, the, the, the living and you also have, uh, well, hybrids. I was a hybrid. Nash, Nash as a character was called a hybrid. And, um, and then you have the connected, and those are people that are connected. Because virtual uh, reality was so good, people decide to just live in this world instead of uh, of living in the real world, so to speak. Yeah. And it's a story of morality as to how far you take it, what do you do, should you, you know, why not live in this virtual world instead of living? If, it, if your brain takes it as being real, then what's the problem with living in this virtual world? Yeah, that's actually really. I'm sorry, I went silent there because I was, I was getting my mind around that. That's a really interesting concept. Uh, yeah, and you know, in the future, it's going to be so good. The technology is going to be so good. This could very well happen, right? Well, definitely. Um, I mean, yeah, you look at PS4s and uh, Xboxes and all that now. They're coming with virtual reality headsets. So that technology really is very much in the now. So it's it's, it's a different exactly. possibility. Exactly. And, and think of it in 2047. I'm sure it's going to be tenfold of what it is now right oh yeah i mean most people will be walking around uh yeah just with these headsets on in life i think or even probably just sat in sofas huge big couch potatoes just living their lives in virtual reality well and that's what you'll, you'll notice uh the different types of people that are have become um these connected that just sit in their chairs and they get up to you know go to the bathroom or, or eat and then they get back in their in their world and um <laughs> Again, the brain can't differentiate between the two. So, and it's been proven in some studies that that's what happens. And if the brain can't differentiate, then what makes it so wrong? Yeah, yeah, exactly. 
the scary thing about that is when you have certain well I'm not going to go into it for for probably legal reasons but when you have certain games and things and if if yes. that's that's where the work obviously that's probably what the film centers on which I won't go into spoilers if that's gonna, but yeah you can imagine how certain games if people can't detach from say a war game without mentioning names <laughs> and yeah. then yeah and going straight out and not detaching from there you could see you know that yeah I really want to watch oh, this I, film now because it's, it's it's going down my way of thinking Absolutely. And I remember having a talk with uh, Guy Roger about it. Um, my facts may be slightly off, but I, I believe there was a child in Hong Kong who ended up dying mm-hmm. because he was connected. Uh, he was playing these video games and, and this virtual game and stayed on that game for days and days and days and ended up dying of dehydration because he wouldn't eat and wouldn't do it. So imagine that, that that actually happened like I think a couple of years ago. That's I'm what sure part I've heard of that one. Yeah. That, uh, you know, I remember Guy Roger and I talking about and like, that's how crazy it is. And potentially that could happen more and more at the better the technology gets. Right. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you know, we're only at the forefront and the beginning of this technology at the moment. I mean, it's been there for a couple of years, but yeah, I think now it's starting to get into that, that very situation where the technology is advanced enough that we are now yeah. in. Yeah, we're definitely at the beginning of that phase. And it is a scary phase. Um, there's another... Lady I spoke to as well, Aaron from a Stephen King book, where it's the same with mobile phones, very similar mobile phones. Everyone's zombies, phone zombies. <laughs> right. And, you know, and that with the virtual reality, add the virtual reality to that. All you ever see nowadays, especially that latest little crazy game, uh, people walking around. <laughs> Again, I'm not mentioning names. <laughs> but you walk around. Oh, we can't names, but, oh, my God, we saw people yesterday doing it, and it was almost sad, right? Because, yeah. I mean... You know, kids, and I, I see it being kind of cool, but when you watch people in their 50s and 60s doing it, mm-hmm. I'm just blown away that, oh my goodness, people are totally addic- addicted to this game. It's nuts. It is. I was in London a couple of weeks ago with, with my family um, for an appointment, and I play, I've got it on my phone for my son. So when we go out, we, you know, when we're together, we go out and play it. Like you say, right. he's, only, he's only nine. <laughs> so that's my excuse. <laughs> yeah, well, my kids too are, are, so we play. So it's yeah. not a. Uh, <laughs> But, you know, as long as you can put some parameters on it. Oh, yeah, exactly. Because we walked around Hyde Park in London, and just like you said, people there, everyone we passed, we were just looking in shock. We said, well, they're playing it, they're playing it, they're playing it. And, you know, from different ages, from young kids, like you say, to people in their 50s and 60s, and it's like, this is crazy. People aren't even looking where they're going. They're not interacting. (laughs) (laughs) Absolutely right. I remember the other day I almost ran over, well, I shouldn't say ran over him, but it was two cars (laughs) ahead of me. And he just walked through the light. Didn't even, didn't even acknowledge that he walked through a red light. And, and people stopped, obviously, and he didn't even notice it. And you, you just see people in the cars just shaking their heads and watching this. They couldn't believe it. It is crazy. I mean, I guess with virtual reality, that t- that wouldn't happen as much because people would just be sat in their rooms. Exactly. They t- they're walking the streets. So yeah. 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 So when when can we see virtual revolution? On is it? Um, right now, uh, it's playing the festivals. Um, I can't remember what the latest, uh, will be at Dragon Con in Atlanta Mm -hmm. and hoping for a worldwide theatrical release, I believe in the new year, either in the fall or the new year. They're just trying to place it, I guess, strategically to see where where it's going to come out. So, and at what time. So we're looking forward to it. I'm pretty excited about it. Yeah, it does. It sounds like a really great venture. I can't wait to watch that one now. (laughs) Uh, Yeah. And you. Our locations were fantastic, and uh, the other actors on the show uh, were great to work with. And it was interesting because it's uh, actors from you know Paris or, or Germany or uh, a couple British actors as well. So it's great, and you know me from LA or by way of Canada, right? So <laughs> it, it was really interesting, and I love the way the crews worked. So yeah, I'm really excited for this movie. Uh, everything about it. So hopefully we come out in the fall, and uh, you guys get to see it and enjoy it. Excellent. That'd be fantastic. It'd be one to watch for. I shall certainly plug that for you and, and and go around and have a look, find all the adverts and the trailers. Last question I have for you, unfortunately, is have you got any other projects on the go that you'd like to talk about? Yes, I recently did a, a four episode or five episode. I can't remember exactly how many. I probably shouldn't tell you all the episodes uh, on Dark <laughs> Matter. All right, cool. Where I play Eric Nero, great, great character, fun to play. And I've started a show called Arrow, mm-hmm. which on the CW. I can't divulge any more info on it, but uh, I've started to find out what 
see how long I'll be on the show. We don't know yet. I've done one episode and it looks like uh, it'll be more. So we're just working on that. And uh, Fantastic. I guested as well on a show called The Strain. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, The Strain. Very good. <laughs> and uh, great. That was another great, great show working with TJ Scott, who's a director, a mm-hmm. uh, friend of mine as well. But it was a um, really powerful uh, episode. So hopefully you guys get to watch that as well. Fantastic. I do enjoy The Strain. Um, TJ, I spoke to TJ last year. On my oh, show, great. yeah, uh, and I'm going to be speaking to him again, hopefully soon too. He's a he's a very he's got a very very good vision. Um, oh. You can always tell when he's directed something. The vision that he has is just you know, the strain with Gotham, whatever he's got. It's just abs- It's it's a unique outlook on how uh, something should be shot. It's brilliant. And he's a um, a really great person to work with as well. Mm-hmm. Just I know he's my friend, so I'm probably biased, but <laughs> I'm on set. Everybody loves working with. With him. He's just uh, very positive and creative. It's just awesome. Yeah, it's um, that's what most people seem to say who's, who've worked with him. I've spoken to. I think it was when his film Death Valley came yeah, out. Don't last tell week. him I said that. No. <laughs> yeah, I know. He won't. You need a door frame bigger so he can get his head through. <laughs> no, that's cool. Yeah, as I said, I think it was Death Valley when he released that last year, which was one of his first film, yes, big right, film. Yeah, big film. Yeah. I spoke to him then as well, so that was great. And uh, I also have uh, another movie that will be coming out this year, hopefully uh, by the fall, if not early next year, uh, mm-hmm. called Project Eden. Um, All right, cool. Another sci-fi thriller uh, directed by Ashley Jensen. And it's um, it's another smart movie, great script, and I can't wait for you guys to see that. I play uh, Special Agent David Roth, and mm-hmm. it's, it's a different take. There's some uh, real twists in this one, so it's great. Fantastic. And you said that's young. There's a co directed. I'm sorry. Ashley Jensen and Terrence Young. Uh, <laughs> but great people. They wrote it, they wrote it and directed it and produced it. It's a it's a movie I'm really excited about as well. Fantastic. And that was Project Eden, yep. Yes. And you said it should be coming out this fall? Hopefully this fall, if not early next year. Fantastic. We'll be keeping an eye out for that one as well then. <laughs> awesome. Okay, so that sadly brings me to the end of all my questions tonight for you, or this morning for you. Is it <laughs> anything that you'd like to say to people who are listening, one final thing? Well, thanks to everyone for listening, who is listening, um, and thank you for having me. Uh, it's great talking to you. And for all the new actors out there, even the actors have been around for a while, just stay the course. Stay the course. Trust it. Trust the path. It'll happen. Thank you, Mike. That was fantastic. Really appreciate your time to talk to me today. Hope everyone enjoyed listening to that. This has been Ramblings of a Hellblazer with Chris Gordon talking to Mike Dopewood. Good night.